Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be talking about a Mark 6 GTI TSI timing job. Okay, so we purchased the Mark 6 a little while back with the intention of doing a TSI timing chain job, a really cylinder head, the whole deal on the car. This car was something that we bought with the assumption that it had jump time. Um, most times when people are selling those vehicles, they're not necessarily ex able to articulate exactly what's wrong with the car. So um, I bought the car making the assumption that that was what was wrong with the vehicle, as that is what most of the circumstances with those vehicles have wrong with them. What ended up happening is we started shooting a video with uh, myself and John at our shop, and we started tearing down the engine, including the cylinder head and, and all of that. Uh, once we got the cylinder head off of the vehicle, we found that there was a rod that had been uh, rapid disassembly, is what some people might call it. So uh, there was a hole in the block or a crack in the block from where the rod came loose and broke into the engine block itself, which meant that the engine was done. So uh, in the spirit of trying to continue along with our project, we are actually shooting this video with the intent of moving forward with that project. So what we're gonna start off with is what you're gonna see is us with the engine disassembled. We had a bottom end that a local friend of ours had that was burning oil. We had it rebuilt and we got it all ready to go. And so this video is gonna be kicking off with us with a bare block. We're gonna be starting with installing our cylinder head and then going through the process. Uh, this is going to be our final result of what we're going to finalize on this video and then our next project, next video of this GTI is going to be the next steps of that. Uh, with that said, timing chain stuff that actually just recently was a release, I think it was yesterday or the day before, in regards to uh, warranty extension on TSI timing chain stuff. So TSI timing chains were extended for uh, 10 years, 100,000 miles on uh, a variety of TSI cars. Well, I don't know if it's all of them, but a large variety of them. So if you are sub 100,000 miles or 10 years, uh, again, whichever one's shortest is the one that they're gonna go by, then you are eligible if you have timing chains jump to have that covered at a dealer. So keep in mind, I don't know if they're doing this at this point, but something that they do sometimes do is they ask for oil change receipts to ensure that the vehicle's been properly maintained for coverage issues like that. So because this job is gonna be something that I think is more in depth and something that I wouldn't necessarily have a regular person doing, and I'm very concerned about anybody making a mistake somewhere along the way that we say something gets misinterpreted and then becomes something where that you have a catastrophic failure on new parts that cause your engine to fail again. So because of that, I don't see this as much of a DIY as a lot of the other stuff we put out, but we do wanna put out the information so that one, so that people are familiar with what the problem is and the process to fix it. Uh, and then kind of show you the process of going along and actually making the repair itself. And we can kind of point out a few things. So uh, with that said, let's get into our install. All right, so we're throwing our head bolts in. And we do have a tightening order, depending on how you get your head bolts. There's actually, oddly, two different head bolts for these TSI engines. And they're the same bolt, they just have different heads on them. And the uh, they either have uh, built-in washers or they don't. And if you don't have built-in washers, then you don't need washers. If you do have built-in washers, then you will need washers. So, so these are all poly drive. They are gonna have a tightening order. And if you don't know what poly drive is, we do have a special tool for poly drives that we have. Probably gonna be one of the most affordable ones you have out there. Unfortunately, poly drives, uh, from my experience, they break pretty often. So it is something that you can experience is if you have uh, any kind of weird angle and you're tightening that you can shear off part of the poly drive. So I'm just gonna go through and snug all these up and then we'll go through our tightening order. Okay, so we're starting with our tightening our head bolts. The torque spec for this setup is going to be 40 newton meters and then we're gonna start in these center ones and work our way out. Now this is easier to do with the cams out because cams, the cams are kind of in the way. They actually are cut so that they're notched and you can 
fit a bolt tool through here, but it's just easier to not have to mess with it. John's gonna do those other two and I'll become the holder. Go back and check these center ones just to make sure they haven't loosened up. All right, now we tighten those down. Now we grab a breaker bar and this is when they get real tight. And we do 90, so same tightening order, but you're doing a 90 degree turn, which is gonna need probably some extra help here to make sure this thing doesn't move on us. <laughs> oh, there we are. There we are. All right, so after we go through our first group of 90s, we do another group of 90s, which these are going to get a little bit tougher. This is one I get. Oh, I struggled with the last time. Right in the first time. It wasn't even hard to get in. Okay, John thoroughly gooped everything up. And I want to put our intake cam on. Obviously, you want to make sure you're on the intake side. You put the intake cam on. Lay that guy in place. All right, and then we're gonna have to time these up. Okay, so here we have our chains in place and the cams are basically just laying there. You have a, these chains have copper links on them and you have a copper link that, that goes to a mark here and you have two copper links up top that go to the mark here and here. That's how you know you have your stuff in time up here. We, it's actually easier if you take, unbolt this and loosen it, it gives you much more room to play with, but you do need to have it set in place because you're not gonna be able to get these, this particular one back in place with this cam here. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of ease of, of uh, wiggle room to get that thing back. So we're just gonna throw these bolts in here and get this thing bolted back in place. Okay, so what John is doing here is this is our cam cradle. This holds the camshafts actually down to the cylinder head. These, this groove that's cut into this whole thing, uh, he's clean, already cleaned out and he's gonna be resealing. So this uses anaerobic flange sealant, which means it does not seal unless there's no air around. So this will, when we put this on, if you put too much on, it will stay wet in the part where it kind of oozes out from the valve cover. Uh, this originally, this stuff is green from VW, and that stuff is about 80. We sell it for around 75 or 80 bucks for the two retail prices. I think over 100 for the two, just one tube. So uh, we have this uh, Loctite uh, flange sealant, which is still anaerobic stuff, serves the same purpose, but it's a fraction of the cost. So this is the stuff we include with our kits because we obviously want to give people cost-effective options. So you reseal every one of these grooves that are cut into here, and then we're gonna throw that on top of the engine. Here we go. We are putting this on, and we have assembly lube on our cams, and we're just gonna put this thing down. I wanna make sure you only do one shot on this thing. So i to make sure that you get everything lined up. All right, we've got to get these cams down because they're still up from uh, not being able to depress on the valves. All right, so we are going to tighten down our bolts here. We put our cam seal in and we have all of our 22 cam cradle bolts. They're all new. These are supposed to be replaced uh, whenever you're installing uh, anything with removing this cam cradle. And so we're just gonna snuggle these up. These have been kind of threaded down and these, you're supposed to tighten to eight newton meters. I'm just gonna snug these up until they're all the way tight. And because the cam cage itself is what holds the camshafts down and the chain on the other end kicks them, it kind of up at the back end here, we're just gonna have to kind of snug these down and then work around. And so we're going across the center here and then we're gonna work our way back, forward, forward, then, then all the way back here um, as we tighten across this tightening order 
and again, this is eight newton meters, but I'm not gonna, I'm not using a torque wrench yet because I'm just getting these things snubbed first. Because as you can see, as soon as you tighten one, the next one next to it becomes loose just like that. So as we tighten this one, that, that seems like it's actually hit where the bottom is. That one too. And that one too. So we're good there. And then we can tighten those up with our torque wrench. This is going to show torque, torquing stuff on Instagram. It's like everyone's like, oh my God, they love torquing things. They love torquing things. Every bolt click, click, click. We could just become the torque channel. You know, we just go around, go to go to the mall and just start torquing wheels at the mall. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Stealing my car? No, bro. We're just making sure your wheels are tight. Have to wear some sort of costume and after we say, like, "You've been torqued." Better get those Instagram followers ready. I'm about to start torquing some. I got some of this RT this this anaerobic seal on my arm, and it looks like raspberry juice. Does it? I might have some skin burns in this general vicinity soon. Oh. Okay, so now we are going to be tightening. We did our eight newton meters all the way around. We are going to do nine degree turns now. So, since we're done torquing and Nathan's done showing us torquing things to the whole world, we're going to go ahead and do our 90s. This blueberry shit is all over my arm. It's not good for your skin, apparently. Nathan, you don't want to show. Doing I agree turns, they are only torque wrenches or what you're interested in. Okay, so we are actually all timed up, everything is tightened on, and we are ready to loosen our tensioner. Before you do that, you want to make sure double and triple and quadruple check all of your timing marks. Again, one up here, one up here on the on the balance shaft here and the balance shaft here. There are the links that are blue that line up with the timing marks here and here. You have another one down here and here that also line up. So these are our marks that we're looking to line up and everything does. So we're, we're ready to roll. You can pull this. Also one note, this tensioner bolt, for anybody who's been around a while, they're familiar with what this is. These are hydraulic and so you have to soak them in oil. If you're replacing it with a new one, soak it in oil and squeeze it in and out, in and out, in and out until all the bubbles come out. And you want to make sure that this thing's pumped up because you don't want to start your engine and wait for this thing to pump up because then you're not gonna have proper tension on your lower timing chain here. Uh, so we can pull this and then we can push this out and get that thing all squeezed out. All right, now we can put our lower timing cover on, which we're gonna put RTV all around here and throw this guy onto our engine here. We have our RTV on and we are ready to go in place. And we want to make sure we get this in one shot. And there we go. And we're going to thread some bolts in here. Start with this one in the top corner. All right. So we are ready to put the cam bridge on this mount right here between the two camshafts. Again, which is why it's called the cam bridge. For the bridges, the cams. Uh, right here, there's an oil screen that is common to break apart and actually go inside the engine. This will line up over here with an oil passage, which is why you want this screen to actually stay intact all the time. So. Uh, this, we are replacing it with an updated version of this because this is a known issue and because a lot of times the screens get broken out. This one actually on this car was broken out when we took it off, which is again why we're replacing it because we want to make sure that it is shown here. So you can see that it is pretty cracked apart, which we'll get a close-up of. So you can see here it's missing quite a few pieces of the cam bridge that we're going to be replacing with this new one. When you put these on, they are a snug fit between here and we're gonna kind of rock it. And we may need to rotate this engine because it does help with getting this on there because these things are pretty snug fit. So, because we're already in time and everything is good, we're gonna rock our engine to try to get this thing mounted in place. And we're not gonna go crazy here. All 
All right, so rocked it over, got a dead blow on here, tapped it in place. Uh, that is going to be pretty good there. So it does seem to be seated down all the way. You can see here that it's seated all the way down. Hammer time. Hammer time. Hammer time. And now we have our bolt that we mount here, and then we have this valve. This valve is actually what controls the variable valve timing uh, to this cam. It controls oil flow. There's a magnet on the outside of the cover here, which opens and closes this guy. So. Just a note, this is a reverse thread item. So obviously reverse thread means lefty tidy, righty loosey. Okay, now we have this stuff all in place. We have a new gasket here and a new gasket here. And we are going to slide this guy in place and then snug these up. And this is where your the, the electromagnet, which is right here, goes, and this is what opens and controls that solenoid valve that we snugged up with that special tool. All right, so a couple things, uh, some progress that we made in between that we didn't show. We threw this on. This is splined in a specific way. We just threw the old bolt in for now. When we get into the vehicle and we can actually get the, uh, the crank counter hold tool on here, uh, we'll show you actually tightening this and replacing this bolt. Uh, but that's not something we've done at this point. We have this top cover tightened on. We have the cam magnet in place. One note, we did have a, a new seal in this because that cam bridge was new. Uh, so we did have to lube that up before getting this in there and twisted this into place and bolted that in place. And now we're gonna go on the other side of the engine. Okay, so here we have our vacuum pump. This is driven right here by the camshaft. It does have a spline inside the vacuum pump here. You wanna make sure the orientation seems roughly correct and we have our metal gasket here in place so it, this does have kind of teeth that bite into the pump itself you can kind of seat it in place it makes it nice so it doesn't fall off and we are going to and we're going to slide that in place and then we're going to snug those up and that this is actually where the roller for the high pressure fuel pump goes and the drive is here, which what you would find normally would be uh, where the fuel pressure mounts, a lot of people get concerned because they've heard a lot of stuff about uh, the high pressure fuel pump cam followers. Because this style uses the roller, which all TSIs do, you don't need to worry about replacing cam followers on these cars. This is not as big of a deal, whereas it would be on an FSI car. Okay, so here we have our hole for our secondary air. This is the combination valve. This is the valve that opens and closes and controls the exhaust, the flow of air getting pumped into the exhaust. This is gonna be something that you hear run on startup. This is because this is a CBFA engine. Most, most of these engines are actually free of secondary air, but that would be what's considered California emissions, but basically just some cars have it, some cars don't, most don't. So this mating surface here gets a little funky. So, we clean it up like so. Shiny and new, and now we're ready to throw our gasket on there. Okay, so now we are gonna throw this PCV valve on. We have it mounted in place. We just wanted to do this to make sure that this engine is closed up and that we don't have any openings that are easy for things to fall into. We are gonna cover our intake ports here and then we will finish this video at a later date. Make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks so much for watching our TSI timing chain video and make sure you follow along. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more on videos like this.